Hey guys, what's up? My name is Gabe and this is Games with Gabe and this is the next episode in the now Coco Engine devlog series. So I had to change the name to Coco Engine devlog because the Jade Engine is already taken by Blizzard, but there is no Coco Engine. I know there's a Coco's 2D, but there is no Coco Engine, so we should be good. Anyways, this episode is about native scripting, so scripting in C++. I'm gonna show you what I have and then talk briefly about how I implemented it. So let's take a look. All right, so let me show you what I have. Right here on the left where my mouse is, this is the game engine and you'll see that I have this game object with a component attached to it called player script. And then you'll see on the right, right hand side of the screen this code, which is the player script. Now keep in mind this code is not part of the engine, this is user code. So this code is completely hot reloadable. Um, notice how this says player speed and it says 10. Well. What if for some reason you wanted to change the name of the variable to m underscore player speed and you want to change the starting value to 15.0. So if I just change all that and then hit control shift B to build it and then you look over here, you'll notice that this will change to m underscore player speed and the starting value is now 15. Okay, this is really cool. This is basically completely re -hot loadable C++ code. So I can also change this value and everything and as long as I change it and as long as I don't get rid of it over here, like say I added another U property, so I wanted to add in uh, an integer that was player death count equals zero. I could add that in and then if I rebuild, you'll notice that this should stay at 81 and then we get a new variable added up here that says player death count. Okay, and also you'll notice that I have a message in here and I'll pull up the console so that we can see this console so this is the uh console that is basically displaying all the output and if i go ahead and hit play and we look at that console one more time you'll notice that shouting out hello player and then if i stop it then it stops displaying the hello player and then say i wanted to change it to something else like maybe uh maybe welcome new player to the game then i could change that over here i can save it and you'll notice that the log puts out a lot of stuff it's basically saying I have it debugging some stuff right now and it's basically looking through and detecting all the changes and then if I build this one more time then it will automatically detect that it's built you'll see that it detected that over here and then if I hit play you'll notice that the log is now welcome new player to the game so that is basically what I have done and this works also uh, I think this is probably one last feature that I should mention. So if I click onto here, you'll notice that when I hit add component, it shows player script down here. Now, what if you wanted to add in a new script? So say I went into here, into my scripts folder, and I created a new item, and we'll call this one our Goomba script, okay? I don't know what this would be, but who knows? Maybe it's just a Goomba script. And then I'll hit add and eventually I'll have this all automated so that it will get the boilerplate code out of the way for you. But I'm just going to copy and paste this and then I'm going to call this Goomba script instead of player script and we'll give it a variable that is uh, M damage value and it deals 10 damage. OK, so then I can save this and I'll get rid of this message and if I control shift B. So that's basically how it works. We can add scripts and we can use scripts and it all just sort of works. And if I put this, you'll notice that it adds it and we have the damage value right here. Very cool stuff. And by the way, I only have floats and ints supported for the inspector right now. I will add more types as it comes along. But I think you can see how I have the basis for <laughs> scripting pretty much done. And this is native scripting too. So it should perform better than if I were to do this in C Sharp or something, technically. Maybe it won't because of the way I've coded it, who knows. Now, I'm sure you're probably wondering, at least I hope you're wondering, how I accomplished all of this stuff. So I'm gonna give a brief rundown of how exactly all of this works. And I think the best way to do that is I'm just gonna draw it all out because there's no real easy way to explain how all this is working. All right, so I have right here drawn just a little bit of how my engine, the Coco engine is working. So basically I have this CocoEditor.exe, which is the thing we were using. And this exe is what you execute. Then this communicates with quite a few DLLs, but among them, there's the Coco Engine DLL. And so this contains all of the engine code. Then there's this thing called the script module DL, which may or may not exist. So if this does not exist, that's perfectly fine. The engine will continue to run because it doesn't necessarily need this script module to run. 
The difference between these two is this, this engine is implicitly linked. So what that means is the DLL is located in the same folder as the exe and before, when, when I actually compile this, it can find this engine and everything and it knows exactly what's inside of here and it doesn't have to worry whatsoever. And so it's just implicitly linked as soon as you start the exe. However, the script module is dynamically linked. So basically, this means that if I can dynamically link this at runtime, it means I can unhook it. So I can just remove this from the engine and then place a new version of it back in over the old version. I hope you can start to see how this will help us when it comes to scripting. So basically what I do is the user writes their code and I have no idea what kind of code they're gonna write or what they may want it to write, but I can give them a few guidelines. I can say, hey, you have to extend this class called script because I know this script class will have a few specific functions. And then I can use entity, which is a library to use, um, to create some ref reflection magic using some extra code generation. <laughs> and basically at runtime, I can hook into all of these script functions. So the user will write some code. And then when they build this, it will basically drop a new DLL over here. I'll see that a new DLL has been dropped over here and then I'll say, hey, unhook the old one because we have some new code that we want to try and apply. And then I basically save the state of all the scripts before I unhook it. Then I hook in the new one and then I try and reload the state of all the scripts that were there previously, except using the new functions and the new classes and everything. Now, this comes with extra things. As you can imagine, because I have this dynamically unhooking and rehooking, I have to be careful about memory. And because DLLs have their own memory pools and everything. Some of the libraries I'm using such as ENT actually have some restrictions. So the way that I basically update all of the entities that are inside of your scripts is I keep a copy. So in entity, all of a game object is, is a number. It's just an ID. And we use this number to identify which game objects go with which things. So basically what I do is inside of the engine, you may create some entities which have like sprite renders and stuff which are all part of the core engine so whenever you want to add a new component to that specific entity what i do is i just say hey this is the id that they want to do and then i actually have two pools so i have a pool inside for the core engine and then i have a pool for memory pools for the script module and basically the core engine has a bunch of components, engine components. So these are built into the engine and I don't have to worry about that. But then the script module keeps all of the script components over here. This way the memory doesn't overlap and I don't have to worry about any sort of weird memory crossover errors and all sorts of weird stuff like that. So basically the scripts can keep control of all of their components, all of that memory. And then if they ever need to get a hold of these components, they can just pass the data back and forth. Now, the last key part of this, which was the hardest part, one of the hardest parts, is code generation. C++ does not have reflection enabled inherently. And all reflection is, is basically says, hey, I have this piece of code here. I want to look at what the code actually says. So like, what did the user name this script? What did they name their variables? And C++ can't do that. But Ent does have a static method of doing this. And basically what that means is I can use Ent to statically generate information about this stuff. And then I can access it at runtime here. The only problem with that is it needs to be statically created, which means it needs to be there before we do this whole process of copying the DLL over and stuff. And so that means I need to generate code. And the way I did that was I created a very simple C++ parser. It does not parse the whole language, it parses a subset. And then it looks through your code it finds the class names, it finds the variables, and then it tries to guess what type they are and everything. And then it generates some code that will allow me to use entity to look at this statically at runtime. <laughs> okay, so let's take a look at the code that's generated and then I'll round off this devlog. All right, so I'm back inside of the user's uh, Visual Studio solution. So basically, if we look over here, you can see that I have the scripts folder, which is where the user scripts are, right? We have the Goomba script and then the kill script, which is just this player script, <laughs> okay? But you'll also notice that there's this generated folder. And if I look into the generated folder, there's three files right now, or actually four files, I'm sorry. So you'll see there's kill script dash generated, which corresponds with this file, Goomba script dash generated, which corresponds with this file, and then the init.h and init.cpp. So if we took a look at the kill script.h, 
Uh, this has a few main parts. So first of all, it has this thing called IDs and debug names. And then last, and then the string to maps. So these three things allow me to remember what the user actually typed their variables as. So basically I just have const char pointers which allow me to see what the player named their things as. And you'll notice that this says M player speed and M player death count, which it got from here and from here. Then the next big part of this is this init method, which registers the player script with entity. So you, this is entity's way of registering new types. And then I have a few more functions in here, which are just add component. And this will generate a bunch of different component things to add them if you want to try and add a component by a string. And then it has a save function, which saves it uh, dynamically, and then a load script function, which loads it. And then this I am GUI function, which calls the I am GUI code, delete, and then some debug printing if I ever need that. And you'll notice the Goomba script looks almost exactly the same. And that is because this is all generated code and it's all doing the same stuff. And then I have this init.h folder, which is also very similar. It has the add component function, but you'll notice that this has this extern C Jade script decorators, which basically just allow me to hook into it through a DLL without having to worry about C++ ABI issues. And this basically just goes through all of the different scripts and tries to add it to whichever one it can. And if it can, then it adds it and then leaves. And then I have the update scripts function, which basically loops through and updates every single system. And then I have the editor update function and I have the save, the load, in it and all these things once again. So all this code is completely generated. If I were to delete this, then to run the engine again, it will regenerate everything. So you'll notice down here that it was just regenerating all that stuff. And then if I go take a look back over there, you'll notice that if I refresh this, I'm having some trouble with Visual Studio. For some reason, it's not refreshing the view over here, but you'll notice that I have this generated folder that was generated and contains everything. So. That's basically how this all works. And it was very complicated to get together. And I had trouble working up the motivation to actually work on this, which is why this devlog is so late. But I'm really happy with the place I'm at right now. And hopefully I will be releasing more of these devlogs since I've gotten a very difficult portion out of the way. Well, that is it for this devlog. And remember, the engine name is now Coco Engine, no longer Jade Engine. I know there's a Coco's 2D engine, but this is Coco Engine without an S. So hopefully I'm good there with the naming issues and everything. And I'll see you guys in the next devlog.